Muzzle-loading squirrel hunting, guns and methods. William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and here we take squirrels with 32 caliber muzzle loaders. I'm Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And me and young Davey here, we've been out squirrel hunting today. We've had snow and it's melted and we had some rain and it was foggy as blazes when I started out this morning. And you would think there'd be squirrels in every one of these trees, but uh, not so. Uh, we did in fact see three squirrels. We shot at one squirrel and we killed one squirrel. All right, but this is a good opportunity to tell you a little bit about Young Davy and how actually to shoot it. Now this gun is of a traditional pattern in that it has a tremendous amount of drop in the stock compared to modern firearms. Consequently, you have to raise your head off the comb to actually sight straight down the barrel, or at least ways I do. I'd have to have jaws like a boar hog, which I have not and do not want, in order to stock this rifle firmly and shoot it in the regular way. Now, Traditions does have, or did have, another rifle, and this was the Deer Slayer. Now, the Deer Slayer was sold as a 50 caliber gun, an inexpensive gun with a hardwood stock or a synthetic stock, but they also offered it with a 32 caliber barrel. That was a pretty good squirrel rifle. They did neglect, however, to put a proper front sight on it. Uh, the sight needs to be raised, well, almost half an inch so that it will actually shoot to the point of aim. But once that is done, that 32 Deer Slayer points more naturally, you can shoot it better, and for squirrel killing, I actually like it better than the Crockett. But we built the Crockett, and so the Crockett's getting used. Well, we've just killed a squirrel that's worth talking about. Not that it's any bigger than any other squirrel, but was taken in an interesting manner. Uh, it is about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We've had rain in the morning. The woods are damp cloudy and overcast. Uh, squirrels ought to be moving, but they aren't moving very much. Uh, was on foot for about 40 minutes. I heard one barking. Made a slow, 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 slow stalk on it. Never could see it. It shut up before I got there. And then I could hear and see another one moving down a good distance away. So I went and pursued that one. Slowly, 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 creeping from tree to tree. I saw him over here. I braced up on this branch right here to take a shot if he ever got close enough. But then a squirrel came down a tree right there. Now I've been telling you about taking braced shots with this gun. Well, this is what I'm talking about. Now when you have your squirrel and you have your gun, yeah, Brace it up against something like this so you can have as steady an aim as you possibly can with these sights. They're difficult enough to see, particularly when you're trying to spot a squirrel that's sitting against a tree that's about the same color as he is in this dim light. But at any rate, we did make the shot. So if you possibly can, do that. When you're stalking squirrels, yeah go from tree to tree and plan to shoot from a rest if it's at all possible. The squirrel was on this tree. I have young Davy on the table here. And for those of you who have just joined us, uh, this is a kit gun. In fact, the Crockett 32 caliber squirrel rifle made by Traditions, which is available as a completed gun and a kit and I built this particular gun from the kit, and there are a series of videos about it. Well, we have taken Davy squirrel hunting again, and we have killed three squirrels. All right. Now, this gun doesn't really fit me all that well, 
And in fact, I made a remark that I saw another traditions gun, in fact called the Deer Hunter, uh, in 32 caliber, which has now been discontinued, uh, would have been better. So we are going to try that out and actually see if it is so. These three squirrels were killed five shots. In short, I missed two ridiculously easy shots with this gun. Would I have done better with the other one? Well, we're going to see. So next, we'll be taking the Deer Hunter 32 out and see how many squirrels we can get and how many shots it takes. This is being brought to you by SIN, Synthetic Industrial non nutritives Inc. At SIN, we take the best of petroleum, coal tar, and agricultural waste byproducts and we make edibles out of them. Unfortunately, uh, we have had some minor setbacks with the introduction of our fire-breathing dragon in time for Chinese New Year. Now we can take our base product, Glop, and we can make anything out of it to give you the salt, the sugar, and the butter taste that you crave. And it was salt, it would be a very good selling point to have a genuine fire-breathing dragon for Chinese New Year to put in the middle of the table. Well, the initial tests were successful and a delegation from the People's Republic of China who wanted to repurpose one of the old people army factories in Hang Seng to new uses. So they arrived and a banquet was set and of course our fire breathing dragon sat in the middle of the table. Well, everyone wanted to make a good impression, which is not all that bad. So every time an engineer would walk by, he'd sort of tweak the valve a little bit which control the length of the flame. Well, by the time several engineers had passed, it seems that the valve had been opened much too much. So the delegation was sat, the meal was served, the climactic moment arrived, the fire-breathing dragon was unveiled and ignited. Uh, well, unfortunately, that wasn't all. Uh, there was a ball of flame from its mouth that seared across the table, uh, caught the food on fire, singed eyebrows and hair of the delegation and the members of the company that were seated therein. And that wasn't quite so bad, but fortunately, we were able to get everybody out in time before the gas tanks underneath the table detonated and completed a very fiery destruction of our test facility. So we have had some minor setbacks in that regard. However, our engineers are hard at work and we are trying to get it out again for next year with our sincere apologies to the delegation from the People's Republic. And we're done. Now the gun has already had its barrel washed with soapy water, been dried on a stove, been coated inside and out with boar butter, and the other parts similarly washed and cleaned. So now this gun is ready for storage or reuse. But what we're going to do is we are now going to take Deer Hunter here out and see how it will do in comparison to Young David. Now, Deer Hunter knows the routine. It has shot squirrels before. You notice the stock is a little straighter than the Crockett stock. Okay, so we expect better things from it. And we will go out there and we will give it a try. And we shall see what happens. We had a rather disappointing trip in the field with Deer Hunter today. As a matter of fact, we engaged three squirrels and we fired five shots and got no squirrels. Hmm. We tried a field adjustment of the sights and that apparently was not good enough. Here is my expedient sighting in shot. 
So I've got a target down there at 20 yards, and we're going to go ahead and sight it in properly here at the bench, and then take it out again tomorrow and see if we can't do some better. And the first two hit right here. We fired a confirming shot, and that hit right here at the edge of the bull. So I'm going to try that and see if we can do it again. I had some initial difficulties actually getting the gun sight again and shooting to the point of aim. Okay, now I think that will kill Squirrel. The iron sight adjustment was successful, but I did have difficulty and it only got two squirrels out of five shots. I like the way the gun handles, so I'm going to put a scope on it and see if I can't do better with it and show you that in another video. Among my prize winning books are Extreme Muzzleloading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing available as softcover and ebooks. I also have an 8 book ebook series on muzzleloading guns and the most recent title is Hunting Big and Small Game with Muzzleloading Pistols. For more information on my books, blogs, and our nearly 300 videos, go to my website at www.hovysmith.com. Now, I'm going to be giving a free seminar on March 11 on how to become an outdoor communicator at the Charlie Elliott Wildlife Center near Mansfield, Georgia. Now, to find out about it, send me an email to the following address. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.